This shake she's given the Prime Minister. That's what that pitch is for. What's that saying? And why would they take a picture that showed that? Unless they wanted to show the agreement to the world. He's your Prime Minister. He's looking after your children, is he? Didn't you elect him with the crown out of Western Australia? Now, I have a problem with this. Because your senators represent the state. Is that correct? Is that correct, Chris? Your House of Reps re represent the Commonwealth. Barry House is a House of Reps guy. Your senators represent the state electors. How can you send any senator to the Canberra with the crown out? Please answer me. Can't. Well, why the hell did you? Unless they're working for the UN. Is that a reasonable conclusion? Yes. Because yes. you're the jury. I'm doing a, what you call a smoking gun syndrome evidence. But we've got good evidence. And that's why we're in the courtrooms, to prove the evidence. We don't care about the courtroom's resistance. Do you know why? Because God's just going to move it all out of the way at the correct time. Are you in agreement to that? Yeah. Well, excuse me, folks. What are you going to do about it? You can be in agreement with it, but what are you going to do about it? Is that good evidence? Yes, it's it inadmissible in a court of law. Because you're going to have a barrister stand up and say, it's just a handshake. <laughs> Dismiss that picture. Strike it out. Don't show it to the jury. That's okay. But this is not a court of law, or is it? Mm. Or is it? Is this God's court of law? Is this God's court of law? Yes. Well, get that understanding. Because you're hearing it as God's people. And God wants you to judge that. He's saying, is this legal or illegal? illegal? You're the judge, not them. The jury is the judge. There's about 30 people here, in excess of a grand jury. Do I have an indictment? Because only tw when you've got 23 <coughs> jurors, only 12 have to say, hey, that's an indictable offence you've shown us, and you've got a true bill. And the foreman then signs it as a true bill. He goes and knocks on the door, and he hands that to the sheriff, and he says, go and arrest that person. And then you'll hear the next one, and you'll sit for a year. Do you want to remove that right? No way. Well, why are you leaving it sleep? Ozzy? Why are the pastors leaving it sleep when they say government is not our business? They'll take everything the government gives them. Global tyranny. You like those words? Now this is extracted. This is not our work. It's a book written by Graham Strawn. That's his address. Etc. Jim Boomba, Queensland, phone number, etc. The book is called 22 Steps to Global Tyranny. I'm not going to plagiarise his book, but we're going to go through the 22 steps he has identified in that book. Is that fair? Yes, that's fair. So I'm not plagiarising his work. We've given him credit. There's the source. And he has correctly identified the steps. So we're only going to touch the steps and show what this man has revealed. You can get that book from that source. This is what he itemised. Step one. And I'll read them all, because they're absolutely important. National governments will relinquish control of their money, float their currency and remove all controls over the flow of money into and out of the country. Step two. National government will continue the practice of borrowing from the international bankers to finance their affairs. Step three. Do you see the words they use, national governments? That's why they're removing the crown from the states. National governments will depend on international investment for all future development. 
Step four, national governments will ensure international, not national, ownership of their banks and financial institutions by transnational corporations and global investors. Step five, national governments will wind back spending on welfare and social programs including education and health. Step six, national governments will ensure international, not national, ownership of their industries and business by transnational corporations, they call them TNCs, and global investors. Step seven, national governments will remove all impediments to the activities of TNCs and global investors in exploiting their resources, including human resources. Step eight, national governments will abolish all measures, including exemptions under trade practices legislation, which protect or assist small, medium-sized, nationally owned business. Step nine, national governments will abolish all forms of protection, tariffs, import restrictions, subsidies for local industries. Step 10, National governments will disempower unions, abolish wage fixation and allow their labour forces to compete in an unregulated global low labour market. Step 11. National governments will sell all publicly owned government run enterprises and public utilities to TNCs and global investors. Step 12. National governments will ensure international, not national ownership of farms by transnational agribusiness corporations and global investors. Step 13. National governments will adopt policies for producing for export and importing for local consumption. Your container goes out, their container comes in, same product. Step 14. National governments will abolish all forms of protection, tariffs, import restrictions for locally owned farms. Step 15. National governments will enter into agreements with international bodies which hand over ownership and control of their country's national natural resources. Step 16. National governments will sign multilateral treaties at the United Nations which surrender their political and legal sovereignty. Has it already happened? Are you going to surrender? Does an Aussie ever surrender? Does an Aussie ever surrender? <laughs> Step 17. National governments will adopt policies of regionalism and multiculturalism and other policies which will eventually eliminate national borders, culture and identity and create global citizens. Step 18. National governments will agree to implement globally determined environmental, social and cultural programs in their country. Step 19. National governments will wind back their national armed forces to level sufficient only su to subdue their own people and participate in global peacekeeping activities as required by the UN. Step 20. National governments will disarm their own citizens so there can be no armed resistance to globalisation. Step 21. National governments will maintain a working relationship with their local media who will divert attention from their developments. Are they doing that? Yes. Until they are too far progressed to be reversed. Step 22. National governments will agree to ultimately surrender their own sovereignty and take direction from the world government. Did you surrender your sovereignty? Yes, not I. Yes. You know now, are you going to make the people who did this accountable within Australia? Yes. Where do you start? <coughs> start where the people should be honest. Because the scripture says, the judgment of God begins in the house of God. That's our house. But when we contribute our house to others, then it's the body of Christ. So God is saying the judgment of God begins at the body of Christ. The forbidden nations. Now we find the United Nations are these nations that are mentioned in the Old Testament. 
Deuteronomy 